Hi, it's Murphy. This is my channel, Murphy's Every Whim, where I talk about books. And the books I'm going to talk about today are those books that I'm putting on my TBR for December. I want to talk about TBRs for a minute. I never thought I would like a TBR. I like to read whatever the mood hits me. In fact, I named my channel Murphy's Every Whim because I'll, you know, just see something, you know, like watch a movie and hear something about a book and want to go out and, and read that book, no matter what else is sitting on my shelves to read. So I never thought I would like a TBR, but I have decided that if I put too many books on a list for the month as a to-be-read list, and I put too many, that's a good thing, and that I get to pick and choose among those books which ones I want to read. If I end up reading all of them, that'd be great, but chances are I'm not going to read all the books that I put on the list. And of course, like in October, where I went completely off list, read half of my TBR, and then read, <laughs> I think, six other books, seven other books, I can't remember, um, just because I was doing something that I needed to, to listen to books instead of reading paper books. So I might go off the TBR, but I like having a TBR. I like making a selection of books, and I like choosing some set of books that help me accomplish something. So what am I what am I accomplishing in December? In December, I want to do some cleanup of my bookshelves. So I'm choosing books that fit two criteria. One, I want to read them. You know, I have books on my shelf that I should read. I'm not really excited about reading. Um I don't necessarily want to read. I have because I should have them. You know, lots of reasons. But the first criteria for this, for December's list, is that I have to want to read the book. The second criteria is that when I'm done reading it, I want to purge it. I want to donate it somewhere. And so that's how I chose this list. Some of these are books that I've actually started. This is December 2023 TBR. And these are in order by size, for a physical size, probably from, eh, mostly from large to small. The first book is Identical by Scott Turow. And Identical is, uh, you know, like, like Scott Turow's books, it has to do with legal issues. And identical is about a murder, and the evidence points to, then you know, they have evidence. They have, you know, DNA and fingerprints and, and things like that. And, of course, there's a set of identical twins who are involved. And I'm assuming this is all going to be about how do you tell which one did the crime? So that's Scott Thoreau's identical. The Bridge at Nogunri, and this is by Charles J. Hanley, San Hoon Cho, and Martha Mendoza. And uh, they won the Pulitzer Prize for reporting on this massacre. So the Bridge at Nogunri, and this is an image of either the bridge or a bridge very much in the same style. Early days of the United States troops being in Korea. You would think that since the Korean conflict came not long after World War II, that our troops would be, you know, well trained and uh, seasoned. And But there was a big enough gap that... During that time, between those two wars, our soldiers were just living in occupied territories, and in particular, occupied Japan. 
and up to no good. <laughs> but anyway, they weren't trained that well. These soldiers were drafted, but they uh, hadn't seen conflict. And they were sent to Korea. And so within the first few days of being in Korea, a group of refugees who were heading south had taken shelter under a bridge like this and bombarded with uh, fire from the U.S. troops for hours and hours and hours and hours. And so this massacre was glossed over by U.S., and it was actually even denied by Korea. And so uh, 50 years afterwards, there are still the survivors and the uh, people who were related to those who perished in the massacre were still trying to get recognition and reparations. And so this team reported on this and won the Pulitzer Prize for their reporting. And this book is about uh, the research that they did. Uh, I'm about 75% of the way through this book, so I really just need to finish it up. But I needed to step away from it for a while. But I, I very much appreciate the care that the writers take with presenting the lives of those who perished and those who survived um, and focusing their time on them. Yes, also interviewing people who were in the troops that uh, had shot onto the bridge, but uh, only to get as much information as they could, not to focus on their lives as much. A powerful book. A uh, good book, well-written, well-researched. Highly recommend it, but I need to finish it. Dennis Lehane's Mystic River. I know that this has to do with some guys who knew each other in high school, I guess. They live in Mystic River, which is a relatively small place, and so everybody knows everybody else. And something happened when they were young, and something is happening now when they're older. One of them is a policeman. One of them might be the perpetrator of whatever this crime was. That's pretty much all I know. Except that I enjoy reading Dennis Lehane. Of course, my favorite book by Dennis Lehane is Shutter Island. And I know this isn't going to be Shutter Island, but I'm hoping it has some of that same flavor to it. That was Mystic River by Dennis Lehane. Chinua Achebe, Things Fall Apart. I'm about a quarter of the way through this. This is a book that I have started reading a couple of times and just put it aside and have forgotten about it. And I'm not going to restart it. I will start from where I am, but I do want to finish this I'm reading this in counterpoint to having just finished Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. Above the Thunder by Rene Manfredi. And another book that I've started before and not gotten very far into it. I want this to be like Kent Harris writing uh, Even Tide, those books. The kind of books where... Uh, interesting, quirky characters somehow come together and have to build a life together. And it, per the description on the back, that's what happens in this book. But when I've tried to read it in the past, I've never gotten to that point where I just had to keep reading. So I want to give this a try again. I, I really think I'm going to like it. I just need to sit down and read it. <laughs> Above the Thunder by Rene Manfredi. The Hungry Ocean by Linda Greenlaw. I am about a third of the way through this book. This is the story of the only female captain of a sword fishing boat in the sword fishing boat fleet. And 
she actually was featured as a character in the movie, at the book and the movie, Perfect Storm, The Perfect Storm. And uh, here she's writing a memoir about her time on uh, sword fishing boats. And so this is one month long trip uh, from beginning to end of them spending time fishing. And I have, they haven't gotten to the fishing grounds yet. They're getting close. And uh, she's just telling, telling the story of, you know, what, what they do, but she's also relating stories from the past, you know, past crew members and how they behaved, why they were fired, uh, troubles that they'd had in the past, the idea of their particular, the owner of their boat and how he wants them to do this quick turnaround trip after trip, which, and why that's a good thing and why that's a bad thing. And so I want to finish this. Um, Linda Greenlaw has also written some cozy mysteries, which I tried to read that I thought were bad, but her memoir is much better. So that's The Hungry Ocean by Linda Greenlaw. Go With Me. And this is by Castle Freeman. I don't know why I have this book. Um, it says, a young woman recently relocated to a tiny Vermont logging town. Lillian is menaced by a mysterious stalker named Black Way. And so this is about her, her being stalked and how the people of the town really aren't helping her any. They just, you know, are blowing it off. And so she and some others take care of the problem herself. That's all I know. It looks pretty short. Uh, it sounds interesting, but again, I don't know where it came from or why it's on my shelf. <laughs> Purple Hibiscus by Chomanda Ngozi Achidi, recommended to me by one of my science colleagues. This 15-year-old girl whose family seems like a good family, but at home, um, the, you know, the house is ruled with an iron fist, and she spends a little bit of time at her aunt's, and once she knows the freedoms that she can have, when she goes back to her family's home, things are never the same. That's all I know what's on the back of the book. That's Purple Hibiscus by Chimamanda Ngozi Achidi. The Dictionary of Lost Words, and this is by Pip Williams. And I've started this. I'm just a little bit into it. So the character in this book, uh, Esme. Esme lives, it, her father is the one who's trying to put together the Oxford English Dictionary. And I've read several books about the history of the Oxford English Dictionary. For instance, The Professor and the Madman, that's a good book. Esme hangs around in the scriptorium where the men are gathering up all the submissions and cataloging them, and she just plays on the floor underneath the big table they're working at. And as she's playing there, little scraps of paper fall down, the ones that they're discarding. And after a while, she's realizing that these words that are being discarded all have to do with a woman's perspective or a woman's side of history. That's the story of the Dictionary of Lost Words. And so it's a, a alternate history, so to speak, of uh, the Oxford English Dictionary. Although I believe there's some, it, I mean, it's a historical novel. I believe there's some, some truth to the history. I'm not quite sure what's true and what's fiction. So that was The Dictionary of Lost Words by Pip Williams. The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. And this is a book I'm about halfway through. This is the story of Mr. Toad and the, his other animal friends. And Mr. Toad gets a car and they go on trips. And so each chapter is really a self-contained story. So this would be the sort of thing that you might read, you know, a chapter at night to some kid who's trying to go to sleep. And uh, I'm about a third of the way, or two thirds of the way through. And so I just need to finish it up. 
um, and then I will donate it somewhere. The reason I'll donate it, I keep a lot of children's books, but I only keep those books that I had in my library when I was a kid, and this isn't one. But So that's Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. Those are the books that are on my TBR for December. I think that since there are four or five that I'm partially or well into, I can actually get these books done in December and purge them, donate them somewhere. I'm having trouble finding out where to donate things to since Planned Parenthood of Iowa or, or of Des Moines isn't accepting book donations anymore. I need to find some place to donate my books because as I've said in a previous video, what comes in has to go out. I have um, specific sized bookshelves for what I read and I need to make sure that I can put new books on them. Well, put used books on them since I don't buy new books. All right, that's enough rambling about my bookshelves and the problem I have of getting rid of books. So oh, that's it of my plans for December. And we'll see how far I get. Kind of an end of the year cleanup. So I hope to see you sometime soon. Take care.